Hey, Tobias, this is Spencer. How you doing, man? Hello, I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. You're nice and clear on this end, too. So I've actually okay. already, we're already recording now, so I'm just going to kind of do a little intro, and then we'll just go ahead and start chatting, if you don't mind. No, sure. Okay. Okay, everybody, this is DJ Rem, and we are live with Tobias from Katana. What's up, man? Well, uh, at the moment, uh, this weekend is kind of free, so I'm uh, just enjoying the great weather and uh, taking it easy. We had a gig last week, so uh, this week it's all it's all taking it easy. Right. So you're you're over in Sweden right now, right? Absolutely, yes. Okay. So your 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 gig you just did was it just, was it in Sweden or was it somewhere else? No, yeah, it was in Sweden. We haven't uh, been able to uh, go abroad that much yet, uh, but uh, I hope things are things are in the making. So uh, probably uh, soon, I hope we'll go uh, into Europe and, and play some gigs. Well, that very very cool, very cool. Yeah. So I got your uh, I got your tune sent to me from uh, Clawhammer, and yeah. I was like, man, these guys are kick ass. Well, wow, thank you very much. So they've uh, Clawhammer's been doing. He's, they've been sending me a lot of good bands. So I, I was glad to. Uh, I'm glad you came across my plate to say. Yeah, well, uh, they seem to be doing a, a very good job, and obviously they're they're working with the listenable records uh, over here in Europe, uh, who have a lot of great bands on their roster. So uh, yeah, I guess they. They probably would be working with a lot of great bands. Yeah. So, is Listen Well Record is that your label then? That is our international label. Yes, they are based in France. Okay. So, how, I guess I, I'm not familiar with how that works. So, how does that work for you guys? Well, uh, I guess we weren't that familiar with how it works either. But uh, for us, it worked like this. We uh, released the album in January uh, in Sweden only uh, because that was the plan originally to, to just uh, release the album in Sweden and uh, after that uh, our management in Sweden decided that, that well everything was going so good that we should try it out and see what people think uh, outside of Sweden and uh, Listenable Records immediately said that they absolutely want to work with the album so that's the way it was. That's cool so uh, I was reading a little bit about you guys and you definitely kind of have a like that 80s metal sound i mean is, is that what you're going for oh yes definitely uh we wanted to bring back something that we felt was was missing today and was sort of dying out uh, all the the great bands uh, that were actually from the 80s originally they they still uh, have a lot of popularity and a lot of fans all over the world but there there don't seem to be that many new bands coming off coming from today's scene uh, playing the same kind of music Music. So we really felt that who, who's going to take over the legacy of the of the 80s bands to, once they actually step down and, and quit. So uh, yeah, we wanted to make sure that we helped um, make this genre survive. That's cool. And I, I tell you what, as a as someone that grew up in the 80s, listening to 80s metal, I definitely s totally appreciate it. So it's very cool. That's great to hear. So what do you guys? Um... You guys, how long have you guys been together as a band? Uh, well, uh, the, the setup that we have today has been around since 2008, but the band has been kicking for maybe around eight years, I think, in late 2003 or early 2004 was the, the earliest beginnings of Katana, but uh, a lot of things have happened uh, on the way, uh, and uh, there aren't many <laughs> similarities between that band and, and the band we have today but uh but it's all been it's all been a natural de development up to now and uh, and 2008 that's uh when we really decided that now's the time to start making stuff happen and you know record an album that will will we will be able to really um to really promote us something that we feel is is great because we, we've recorded stuff all over the years uh, 2007 we recorded an entire album that we actually just threw away because it, it sounded like crap it sounded like we weren't ready and uh, we didn't know what we were doing so uh, we changed uh, a lot of stuff around through throughout some old songs and uh, some members quit and we took in new people and uh, yeah around a year later we really felt that now is the time to to begin 
Nice. So have you been with the band from the beginning then? Uh, I haven't been with the band from the absolute beginning because uh, the band was uh, when the band was started. I that's around the time that I actually stepped into the Swedish military, and uh, the guys that started the band, I had been with them. Well, I've known them for like since I was five or six, I think, uh, and we had a band together earlier that uh, kind of went to pieces, and uh, so uh, they started a new band, and uh, I joined after I got out of the Swedish military. Nice. I bet that was quite the experience, eh? Uh, 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 yeah, that was uh, something else, I guess. I was uh, in there for 10 months, and uh, yeah, it was... No, it's always something to, to, uh, to take with you in life, I guess. But right. uh, there wasn't really that much of, of, of Katana going on. I think, I, I think Katana as a band has done around... 65 or 70 gigs and I've not been in like two or three of them so I've been around basically from the beginning yeah yeah that, that, that's pretty good for saying it from the beginning definitely <laughs> yeah so do you guys all live in the same town together yeah we do absolutely uh, we're not all from the same town but uh, yeah we, we're located in the same town right now Oh, that's cool. I'm sure that makes it easier to uh, get together and practice and whatnot. Yeah, well, I think it's uh, it's almost a necessity. Uh, there are some some things that I've seen, you know, projects that people have had over the years, uh, this and that, and you know, sending stuff over the internet. And I think it's always possible to write music that way and to maybe record an album but if you want to be a really good live act and have the ability and the opportunity to really rehearse together you have to you have to be able to you know be physically at the same place often to to make it happen right okay so to kind of to kind of follow up on the one thing you mentioned about you know writing music how do you guys uh what's your creative process for doing that? Is there like one, one particular person that pretty much writes all the songs or do you guys kind of get together and collaborate? How do you, how do you go about that? Well, uh, on Heads Full Roll, the, the album that we have out right now, it's been pretty much one person writes a song and that one, that song is about 90% finished. Uh, he presents it to the rest of the guys in the band and we kind of just play it and, you know, see if, if everything works and if there's anything that needs changing or stuff like that and if everything just works then we're we're done with it uh and it's been i guess around three people who have been uh writing the songs uh on the on the songs that we are working on today uh it's more like yeah it's some of the songs are still you know one person writes them then brings them to the to the rehearsal studios but a, a couple of tracks we've actually just kind of jammed up in the in the rehearsal studios and that has actually worked far better better than i thought it would be possible because i've never really you know been that jammy improvisational kind of person i i like to be in control of what i'm doing and and you know have everything worked out but it's actually been rather fun and it's uh, i think it will surprise a lot of people what we're doing right now very cool. So you're kind of Very stepping cool. outside the box there. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So how often do you guys uh, get together and practice then? Uh, well, uh, nowadays it's around two th two times a week. And if, if we have a gig coming up, then maybe three or four times a week. Uh, and maybe like four hours at a time. But it's been it's been up and down uh, a lot with that. Uh, the first couple of years we played, uh, especially around 2006 and 2007, when we were were planning to record this album that we never actually released, we could easily be in the rehearsal studios uh, four or five times a week, uh, four hours a time, four months at a time. It was, uh, I mean, and, and I think, I mean, that was a, a tedious process, obviously, but uh, it's something that we have a lot of use of today because I think that a lot of, a lot of people notice that we actually are, you know, we know each other very well musically and we can do stuff on stage that, you know, you can't really do if you haven't played those hours and hours and hours of music together, whether it be songs or covers or just playing for fun or 
actually rehearsing new material. It's you, you just have to play and play and play until you really, really know each other and can just you know read each other's minds basically. Well, I have to tell you when I listened because I listened to the whole album from front to front to back and I and I've been playing I've been playing a lot of the tunes actually on my radio show on Mondays and Tuesdays and I've gotten a lot of positive feedback and they're like, man, this is you know haven't heard a band that sounds like this in a while so. I, I think it's all coming together well, for my opinion, anyways. For you, that's very nice to hear, and thank you very much for uh, for playing the songs. Yeah, that's kind of, and that's that's the beauty of my gig is I don't at Metalhead Radio. The owners don't tell the DJs what we have to play. We pick what we play, and we play a lot of requests. And but it's nice from the the standpoint that I get to play what what I like, <laughs> and, and and that's how bands like you get on my show, and and how I get you know. I find a band I like. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna play it because I can. <laughs> yeah, well, that's uh, that's very good to hear, and I think that it definitely should be more like that because today, I mean, radio music is uh, it's. I don't even can I can't even find the words for it. I mean, there, there's one radio station in, in in Sweden that plays like, well, what they claim to be rock and heavy metal, and basically they have like five tunes that just goes around day after day after day on on the air and they never do anything outside of the box at yeah. all it's just the same goddamn track playing all over again and, and nobody wants to hear it i mean half of them aren't even what anyone but them would call a rock song so it's yeah it's it's great to hear that uh, there are still uh, radio stations in the world that actually play what they feel is good music yeah let me guess they probably play nickelback over and over and over Oh my God! Don't even get me started on that band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have uh, they have butchered those songs over and over again until you know, ah, it's it's amazing. Nickelback is yeah, they are huge in Sweden, and I can't absolutely not stand it. They're uh they're the Justin Bieber of metal, man. The Justin Bieber of metal. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So um, where did you guys record this album at then? This album was actually recorded uh, in a town called Varberg, uh, a few uh, kilometers south of uh, of Gothenburg, or a few, a few like sixty kilometers. And uh, it's actually owned by Andy La Rock, the guitarist of King Diamond. Oh wow! Who nice. has his own studios there? So uh, yeah, it was uh, it was really good because we know we we've been working with. Uh, technicians and producer producers over the years, you know, for demo recordings and stuff like this. And uh, Andy was really the first person that we worked with in a studio that really got what we were trying to do because he was in that whole movement that we're trying to recreate with King Diamond. And you know, he, he's seen everything and met everyone. And and he's also a, a enormously talented guitar player. So he could be like, you know, we could be recording something, and he would be like, well, you should take that chord but you should take it like this because this is the way that you know Dave Murray would have taken this chord he would have put his fingers like this rather than like you're doing right I, I mean he knows absolutely everything about this music and to be able to record with him was a fantastic process and uh, I can't imagine that we would go any other way when we're about to record our next album well yeah that's a, that's awesome that definitely worked out well yeah, absolutely. He's, uh, I mean, he, he knows what he's doing. Absolutely. Yeah, and I tell you what, a lot of my fans and some of the other DJs are going to love this interview. I mean, they would have loved it anyways, but talk, they're all huge King Diamond fans. So you, you just uh, scored another not another point with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so are we. Uh, how can you not be? He's, uh, they've done some amazing stuff, both him and, and, the, and the actual band. Yeah. So what... Uh, this is kind of a, not really an awkward question, but you know, when, when you're going to talk about Katana and your band, you know, what what should the listeners know about you that is different from other bands? I guess you can maybe elaborate a little more. We've already talked about kind of what you're going for, but just kind of elaborate for the listeners when they listen to this, so they have an understanding what you guys are going for. Well, we're going for. Uh, well, we, we feel that in the in the early 80s, when, when metal was new and heavy metal was just coming out, th there were no sort of, you had no demands on yourself. You could do pretty much what you felt like and there were no, no one go, coming to you saying, you know, 
uh, you should keep within these parameters or you know you should be doing like this or your lyrics should be about this or you know you did whatever you wanted to and, and people that could basically not play more than three chords could form a band you know an old punk band and turn it into heavy metal and, and make something great with it because they they had no limits with what what they were doing they could uh, they could just have fun and write good songs and you know wear red spandex and and uh, <laughs> like aerobic sneakers and just go out on stage and and uh, tear the place apart and and we feel that that kind of attitude has been lost along the way i mean it started with probably with nirvana and stuff like that when you just you know people would go up on stage in, in a pair of jeans and and just you know play their songs and look kind of bored and, and go off the stage and people would love that and we feel like this isn't there's no magic left in the in the music in the, in the whole experience of a live show and the and the music itself so we really just wanted to say goodbye to the past 30 years and you know go back to 1982 1983 when when everything was fresh and new and you can do whatever you want and just you know we just don't we don't just believe in our dream we actually make people see that we do that we we put everything into our live show everything is about the live show really uh and we try to recreate that as much as possible on the live uh, on the album uh, obviously but uh Katana is something that you should keep your eyes uh, keep your eyes on until you get to see them live because this is this is something that I think a lot of people won't be expecting that we actually give as much on stage as like we do. Very cool. Yeah, and well, hopefully you'll make it to America, and then we can uh, us Americans can come watch you. Well, that is the that is the plan one day, I guess, or the dream. Uh, yeah, we're not going to give up. We've been doing this for for a long time, uh, and we're not going to give up. We're going to continue playing until they drag us off the stage. Basically, I mean, we've only been, as I said, when I mean the band has been around for like 2003, since 2003, 2004, and it's just, you know, the last six months, maybe a year, that we've actually started seeing some progress outside of the span of fans that we have in like Gothenburg, Sweden, because we've wanted to take things one step at a time. You know, we, we really don't want to like sell a couple of albums in Argentina and like go about and bragging about, yeah, we're, we've sold albums in Argentina. We're like famous in Argentina, you know, there, there, it's, it's so easy for people nowadays to, to seem bigger than they are, thanks right. to the internet and, and stuff like this, right. you know, we wanted to go the other way. You know, we we never wanted to, to to take things where we weren't ready to go. So we've been building everything up. We have a great fan base in Gothenburg and in Sweden, and uh, it's starting to show in other places now that we've released the album internationally. And uh, well, we hope that we, it will keep growing bigger, but we will definitely keep on forward. We won't give up. Excellent. Never. Yeah. Yeah, I think the and I think and I and I do as a fan. I think the fans will pr appreciate the fact that you're being patient and and not just throwing crap out there at people, you know, because people want to hear a band that's that that's really uh, believes in what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, and we're one of those bands. I I hope anyway, but uh, that's how we feel it. You know, we we really believe in what we're doing, and we. We would never go on stage if we weren't if we weren't ready to give 110 percent, and we would never release an album or a song that we didn't feel that we are absolutely absolutely satisfied with. That has if it had even one tone wrong on it, we would change that and change that and change that until we were satisfied with it. We would never like go out there and, and deliver something that isn't our best. Very cool. Okay, so another thing that I really, really like about your album, besides how good the music is, but I, I really love the artwork, the cover design. How, who, uh, who came up with the design for that? Yeah, the cover. It's uh, <laughs> yeah, we we all love it very much as well. It's uh, it was actually painted by a, a Bulgarian artist named Dimitar Nikolov. Uh, who I found on the internet, uh, he had done the cover, I think, for uh, the Keep It True Festival in Germany. They had they had released like a, a CD with, or not a CD, obviously a vinyl, a 12 inch, uh, with bands that play the Keep It True Festival. And I saw the cover of this uh, album, and I was like, oh my god, this guy absolutely knows how to paint 
uh, how to paint uh, 80s heavy metal album. So I tracked him down in Bulgaria and uh, said, you're going to do our album cover. And that's, uh, that's that. So we discussed everything uh, in the band first, obviously, and then sent, uh, sent him some ideas about what we wanted on the, on the cover, what kind of feeling we wanted it to, uh, to convey and stuff like this. And uh, he sent some sketches back and we were all absolutely blown away and said, you know, go ahead and, and do this. And uh, he sent us back the, the artwork and we were like, this is the coolest artwork in the history of heavy metal. It was, I never thought that we would be able to, to have something that cool on our album. But uh, yeah, we will, as with Andela Rock, we will definitely be working with the Dimitar again for our coming albums. Very good. I'm sure he'll do you proud, no doubt. Yeah. What um? Okay, so the, you know this goes way back for you, but you know how the how the name of the band come to be? Um, it was um, Oscar, our previous guitarist and one of uh, the original members, uh, who had this nick for Japan, I guess. Uh, and uh, it was something that felt really good from the beginning. I remember him telling me on, I think it was like ICQ or something way back. But yeah, I, I think the title for the new project uh, that we will be working with is Katana. And I was like, yeah, that's that's a really cool name. And one thing that struck me as uh, as odd over the years is how many people actually don't know what a Katana is. Because for me, that's always been... You know, it's, yeah, it's a katana, obviously, and it was a cool name, but uh, I didn't know that it was sort of a, almost like nerd information to know what a katana is, because I've always known it, and I'm not even that much into Japanese mythology and Japanese history, but uh, yeah, for those who don't know, obviously, katana is a samurai backsword, uh, the primary ve- weapon of the uh, samurai warriors in, in Japan. Right, so I even noticed a little theme of that in some of the, in some of the songs on the album, right? Yeah, it was a it was a theme that we uh, well we, we've been working on it from time to time. I mean, there have been periods where we wrote more songs uh, that were Japanese oriented, and periods when we wrote completely different stuff. And uh, I mean, obviously, when you when you have had like six years to write your debut album, there are a lot of songs to go through to to get which songs are the best. And uh, on this album, Heads Will Roll, we I think we settled with two or three songs that uh, that are have something to do with with Japan, uh, which is kind of funny because I read I read a lot of reviews for the album and everybody seems to be uh, in agreement that this is a Japanese you know concept album in some way and that you know people will point out like maybe Rebel Ride or one other song that this song isn't about Japan, so it doesn't fit on the album, but actually there are like two out al- two songs on this album that are about Japan. The other songs aren't. So, uh, well, I guess that's what, uh, what, what an image will do for you when you, when you're named Katana and you have a big samurai zombie on your, on your album cover, then it doesn't really matter what the, what the lyrics are about because they will be about Japan, obviously. Right. Yeah. I, I, but, uh, I, I didn't have that impression by the way. No. No, I just uh, right. was like, this is good music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's uh, that's what we're hoping for, obviously. Uh, and also, I think that uh, uh, with the Japan thing, it, it it will be something that maybe two or three songs per album. We, I mean, we're we're not a concept band, and I don't think that we will, we will ever be a concept band. So, but it's a it's a fun thing to come back to from time to time. Right. Yep. Oh, very cool. Right. Oh, very cool. Where uh, where can where, uh, speaking of the album, where can listeners buy it? Hopefully, uh, listeners can buy it uh, from your, you know, regular regular record store. But I think it's available on uh, Amazon, and obviously, Listenable Records have uh, their own web shop at uh, www.listenable.net. I think it is. So, uh, I mean, obviously, it's it's best for for everybody to to buy it directly from the from the record label. But I think it should be uh, distributed distributed somewhat fairly good in the uh, states well you know i'm just a guitarist so i have no idea about the actual uh, uh mechanics of the uh, distribution networks and stuff like this but um 
yeah, I say Amazon has it, and uh, and listenable records also have it. So uh, that's a good place to start, I think. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to I'll have to check and see if it has a local record store because I'm guessing they would probably be more likely to have it than one of the big. You know, maybe the chains have it too. I you know I don't know how you have it distributed. So. Yeah, well, it. Uh, I guess uh, I I, did, I really don't know what it's like in in uh, in America, but uh, over here in in Sweden and I think most of Europe, you know. Uh, the actual record store that you go to, that's pretty much dead by now. It's just, you know, mail order or internet order. That's that's the way to go if you want to buy an actual album because the, the industry is so destroyed by, you know, everything with uh, piracy and stuff like this. So there are no record stores left except maybe one in each big city. Okay, I just, uh, I just <laughs> while you were talking, I went to BestBuy.com. That's a huge chain over here electronic chain and the very first yep. thing that came up for there's your album right there best buy <laughs> great so there you know there you have it bestbuy.com there you go so that's good you're distributing well that's if you're if you're at bestbuy.com in america you're distributing well they're very cool <laughs> i didn't know that but uh yeah that's really cool to hear actually so you can tell the guys that <laughs> They can promote that Best Buy has your album. <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely check it out. So that's the beauty of the internet, to be able to check things quick. Yeah. So uh, if, I was to, uh, if I was to grab your, your iPod or your MP3 player, whatever you listen to music on, what would I find you listening to right now? Um, right now, you would probably be uh, listening to Man of War. Battle Hymns, the new, uh, the newly recorded version of Battle Hymns. Love that album, by the way. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing, and I, I, I really think that it was. I, I mean, I, they can never do that album again, obviously, and ha- make it better than the first one. But uh, I think they, just the, the, the pure heaviness of the sound is so amazing to hear. And obviously, I saw them when they played uh, both in in Birmingham and in Gothenburg. Uh, Mini mini tour uh, in in spring, but I I mean just the, the the sheer sound, the heaviness of all the sound, and you know the, just the volume and everything. That they are the the loudest, meanest band on this planet. They, I I can't even begin to to explain how much I love Manowar. They are the coolest band ever. Yeah, I'm gonna agree. They're they're a staple on every show I do. I always play a couple of their tunes, and it's I find it amazing the amount of people that have never even heard of them. It's crazy. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's really weird, and and uh, you know I I can't even understand how uh, the amount of people who who just think that they are silly and and uh, whatnot they think, but I mean, it's the music is so amazing that. You, you know you can think whatever you want to think about the band or or whatever or the lyrics or you don't you don't even have to listen to the lyrics you can just the music is so awesome that everybody should like it i think yeah no i'm going to agree with you on that so is there anything else that uh the metalhead listeners or anybody that downloads this podcast once i podcast it should know about you guys Well, uh, what I want you, everybody to know right now is that we have released our uh, our debut album, and it's called Heads Will Roll, and you should definitely check it out because it's an album that will uh, bring joy and uh, new life into the the music of the 80s that everybody loves, but everybody seems to have forgotten by now, and uh, it will be a great reminder. And uh, do check us out. At, and drop in at uh, facebook.com slash Katana official and, and say hello and uh, keep your eyes open for, for new for news about uh, about Katana because we will definitely be uh, there will be stuff happening soon uh, so uh, check check it out and check back okay well I'm sure they will and I know I definitely will I actually um, this morning I posted the flyer for this interview on, on your Facebook page I don't know if, it, if you had a chance to see it or not but it's there yeah Absolutely, I saw it uh, earlier. I w- I'll probably post it uh, right back up so everybody can can see it on their news feeds and stuff. Yeah, very cool. Now I got one last thing to ask. I got a favor. If you could make me a couple radio tags, that would be very sweet. Absolutely. So if you can just make one that says you're listening to DJ Rem on MetalheadRadio.com, and then one that just 
just a blanket one that just says you're listening to metalheadradio.com. That one I will send to all the DJs so they can play it before they jam your tunes. Yeah, cool. Absolutely. Uh, so I just go ahead and, and say it like... Yep, just go ahead and just, just do it, you know, the two different ones, and I'll actually go through and I'll cut and edit it out of the recording. Yeah, okay. Um, you're listening to metalheadradio.com. Is that about right? Yep, yep. So, you know, make sure you say your name and stuff in there, though, too. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Hello, this is Tobias from Katana, and you're listening to metalheadradio.com. Perfect. And uh, the other one was, you're listening to DJ Rem? Yes, right? sir. Yep. Um, hello, this is Tobias from Katana, and you're listening to DJ Rem on MetalHeadRadio.com. Very cool. I appreciate it a ton. Yeah, thank you very much. So, I also appreciate you taking the time out of your busy life today to uh, to talk to me. So. <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, my pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you very much for for showing interest in the band, and I uh, hope you will uh, continue to like it and continue to play it. That I will, and like I say, I've been pushing it hard towards other DJs to get to get them playing more too. So try to get you in the in the in the stream, so you're a, a regular on a daily basis. So, and just for all the listeners out much. there, just remember that this interview will replay. Well, I guess you'll be listening to it when I replay it, <laughs> July eighteenth. <18th. laughs> yeah. Probably. So for for your information, July 18th at 9.30 p.m. Yeah, I will definitely check it out. Okay, and once after I replay it on my show, then I will um, I'll podcast it and I'll email it and post it on your Facebook page to you guys. Great, thank you very much. Appreciate that, it. That way the rest of the guys in the band can uh, can check it out too. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's see see how I did. Yeah. Oh, you, awesome, man. Rock. <laughs> yeah, cool. Thank you very much. Yep. So once again, thank you for uh, taking time to, to chat with me, and you have a good day, okay? You too. Thank you very much. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. You too. Bye. <laughs> 